I am a theologian of disability, a liturgist, so I can curate worship experiences in a Christian context, and a poet from Summerside, Prince Edward Island, which is a tiny island off the east coast of Canada in Mi'kmaq territory, since we were talking about that. I am a person with spastic cerebral palsy, which is a neurological condition that affects motor control, as well as a bunch of other things. And when I have more than five minutes, I'll talk to you happily about that. And I do have a doctorate in theology. I teach, research, and write about what is called a sacramental ecclesiology of disability. So I study how rituals like baptism and Holy Communion can help people with disabilities like myself, like other people that we know, to form equitable, that is just compassionate church communities. I'm certain that other faiths are similar. I don't know as much about other faiths as I'd like and would be happy to learn more. So part of the meat of this presentation is a couple definitions. Sacraments in this case are embodied, so material rituals that symbolize Jesus Christ, his presence and his ministry to specific church communities. Uh, baptism is the primary initiatory ritual of the Christian faith where believers can receive and experience unity and to some degree spiritual regeneration through immersion in water. Meanwhile, Holy Communion, which also goes by a bunch of other names, that's a long story, is a meal of bread and wine that represents Christ's empathy and solidarity with all of humankind and all of creation. The most important thing about these two rituals, which I hope you can see pictures on the slide, is uh, that they motivate and activate human relationship. These rituals create what I would call effective access to justice which allows human beings to befriend and support each other. So it gives us the emotional space to act out empathy and solidarity. For instance, when people in Christian churches can create orders of worship with large fonts on paper of contrasting colors, when we retrofit church buildings and other buildings with ramps and FM or loop audio systems and other physical practices like that that give space to people with disabilities to be ourselves. And when people of diverse life experiences can eat and pray and make music together across difference, these are all instances of what I would call divine hospitality and they all portend the kind of thing that God has in mind for every human being. I am certain that faiths outside Christianity have similar practices. I would love to know more about that. So since we were just talking about mental health and we are talking about friendship, these rituals create the space. They create the conditions for human beings, all of us, to exemplify hospitality in the time of the pandemic. So if you can have a front porch visit with a friend during COVID, or leave small gifts on their doorstep, or engage in phone or video calls, like this Zoom call, or advocate for the needs of other people, like frontline workers in hospitals, or grocery store workers, or refugees, or whatever. These are all forms of that same divine hospitality. They all affirm people's mental health, create networks of friendship and support, and allow us to stabilize each other in times of great uncertainty, like the time of COVID-19. I feel like I went really fast, and that is all that I had to say. I will stop sharing my screen, and I would be very happy to take questions.